Greetings, unsettled souls. Ever since, friends, the correct views of which I welcome you to has been on Opera News. I have noticed that a lot of people, and also on YouTube, which I'm trying to get everybody away from there and on to Opera News, um, really enjoyed the Ron Paul was right segment of the show. And now we're going to have Ron Paul is right part two, because I came across this article while uh, scouring the internet for uh, information for all of you. And uh, I came across this article from a Adam Salazar, who I highly recommend uh, you guys follow his work, A-D-A-N, Adon, I guess that's Adon Salazar. Had the pleasure of uh, corresponding with him a few times. Very, very good person. Um, Representative Paul warned about the dangers and perpetual, perpetual wars and the blowback in the Middle East. His warnings on Afghanistan revisited amid the crisis. Now, I like that it's called Ron Paul was right. I, this show had that name first. Damn it. No, that's fine. I guarantee Adon did not mean to do that. It's just, it's, you know, it, it's sort of the main meme right now. Ron Paul is right. And to think, we could have had this man for our president. Just, just stop and think about that. Could have had this man for our president. People said in 2012 that he was too old. That's interesting. Because if he'd have won in 12... 13, 14, 15, 16, and then again, 17, 18, 19, 20. He was healthy enough to have done it. But Sam, he had a stroke. I read about it. He had a stroke. His second term would have been over when he had the stroke. He was, and thank God still is, the stroke didn't affect that part of his brain. He was and is as sharp as a tack. Okay, he had his stroke on air because his mind has been brilliant his entire life. He's a doctor. He was one of the best congressman the country has had in its history. This man could have been our president. Well, let's let's look at what he was saying when people didn't vote for him but voted for other people. I remember Christelle went and Christelle and I went to Bilderberg why why it mattered to me and we were listening as the whole thing fell apart and Paul was getting cheated. Let us remember how he got cheated in Iowa as well. They changed the rules to keep him out. Let's take a look at the man who they kept out. A <clears throat> speech is given by former Congressman Ron Paul. Yes, that is Dr. Rand Paul's father. On the House floor are being revisited for their incredibly prophetic warnings on nation building in Afghanistan. Well, shazam, Sparky, imagine that. In one clip from March 2011 being recirculated on social media... Paul argued that it was time to bring the troops home from the war-torn nation, calling it a costly mistake and a fruitless venture. Quote, the large majority of the American people now say it's time to get out of Afghanistan, Paul said. It's a fruitless venture. Too much has been lost. The chance of winning, since we don't even know what we're going to win, doesn't exist. Imagine that. Financially, there's a good reason to come home as well. Some argue we have been there because it we leave under these circumstances we'll lose face. It will look embarrassing to leave. So how many more men and women have to die? How many more dollars have to be spent to save face? That is one of the worst arguments possible. Um, and again, I've I've heard people saying that he should not that we should not have left Afghanistan. We should have never went. WTAM 1100, uh, voice of Cleveland, Mike Trevisano, uh, had a good point. He goes, you know, I might not be a brilliant man, but why didn't we either destroy the weapons before we left? Take them with us. Or plan for their removal prior to when we left. Also, why didn't we get Americans and those we needed out of there, why didn't we get them out before we left? It's a fair question. It's a fair question. All right. 
Elsewhere in the speech, it says, uh, Paul pointed out that the U.S.'s perpetual occupation of a country, and he reiterated, we can't change Afghanistan. The people who are bragging about these changes, even if you could, you're not supposed to. You don't have the moral authority. You don't have the constitutional authority. Now, I do kind of disagree with him there. I think we do have the moral authority because Paul Joseph Watson, Paul Joseph Wilson said it best. Some cultures are better than others. That's it. You know what? That's a correct view. That's why I named the show that. Because I want correct views on it. And that's a definite correct view. Absolutely. So, if you have a culture that thinks that it's okay to beat women in the street, and you have a culture that doesn't, there's no ambiguity there. There is right, there is wrong. Right and wrong is not relative. And the idea that it is, is what leads us here. But still, I mean, what the gist of what Paul is saying is absolutely correct. This is military Keynesianism to believe that we should do this forever. In another speech from 2009, I'm going to wrap this up for you, shared by the former rep son, Rand Paul, Paul the elder Paul remarked, <clears throat> what if our foreign policy of the past century is deeply flawed and was not has not served our national security interests? What if we realize that the terrorist threat is our consequence of meddling in the affairs of others and has nothing to do with us being free and prosperous? Most people should have listened to Ron Paul years ago, tweeted Rand. Other, others noted in uh, Paul's farewell speech from 2012 in which the former congressman commented that, quote, violent anti-Americanism has engulfed the world. Because the phenomenon of blowback is not understood or denied, our foreign policy is destined to keep us involved in many wars that we have no business being in. <clears throat> national bankruptcy and a greater threat to our national security will result. Every word he has said there is true. The economy is crashing right in front of us. For those that don't know, blowback was the term that he made that when you force people into something that they don't want... When you force, I'm not saying you can't choose for yourself, but when you force a country to accept that which they do not want to accept, then you are opening the door for failure. Okay, But Sam, you just said that some cultures were better than others. That doesn't mean that we should not for humanitarian aid. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't do things economically which would force that country to act differently. But the idea that we need to go there and force them to do something is simply something that is impossible to do, it's irresponsible to do, and it is expensive to do. And what did we do? We failed doing it. That is the sad but correct view.